All right, Ulysses, it's a fun Friday episode, and that means we will have baseball trivia name that war, but we also have a combined player review where we have to discuss the play, as short as it was, of both Tyler Glass now and Luis Patino from this past season. It was a lot of uh, short sample size, small sample size for both of these players, which is unfortunate, so what better way to look at their 22, 2022 season than a combined player review episode. So let's get started right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sembrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Be sure you follow that and check out and subscribe to that YouTube page of ours, Locked On Rays. Just put that in the search bar and bring that up, and you will hopefully enjoy. Also, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And you can email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. So, all right, we have two players that we have to review, plus trivia and name that war. That means for uh, a packed episode today. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Uh, Tyler Glass now. I think, um, you know, I guess we're going to have to roll through the uh, the good, the bad, the future, and the grade for both these players. I'll just, uh, you know, make this pretty easy for Tyler Glass now. I think the good part is the fact that he was able to return and pitch in the regular season uh and and just the fact that he returned this year that wasn't a guarantee no it wasn't a guarantee uh let's let's start with that but in the small sample size that he give that he did give in in the regular season six and two thirds uh 0.9 whip uh 135 era 10 strikeouts so that's it we don't have a lot of of big data because there was not not an opportunity to get that big data, uh, obviously you need a little bit more of innings pitch in order to get all that Savan and, and information up. But I'll, overall, I think you hit it right there uh, in the head with that's that's the number one. He was healthy. I mean, healthy, healthy, healthy. Um, he came back uh, when the team needed him, which is very commendable as well. Uh, mm-hmm. He gets that offer, uh, that, that contract, and signs it, which I think basically – affirmed the race position of like, we're not just going to Nick Anderson, you uh, we're not just going to use you and, and blow up your arm and then say, see ya. Good luck. You know, we're, we're committing this to you. We're committing this money to you. If there's a chance of you coming back, that would be really swell. And, you know, I, I think that that matters to a player. Why would he rush to be in the playoffs? If again, he could be Nick Anderson. Like that's not, that's not something yeah. any, any player would want to to do. So I think that was the cherry on top for him to just like, okay, yeah, I would feel comfortable coming back this early and 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 perform. And one more positive I want to highlight is the playoffs. I mean, that, th- those five innings, um, just tremendous. Look at the character arc yeah. um, from his start game five in the ALDS against the the Houston Astros, where. He was he was uh tipping he was pitch, uh, tipping his pitches they they all found out and they were all feasting on him and three years later he's just shoving shoving when his team needs him just like they the team needed him in, in game five of 2019 they right. needed him in Cleveland and it's just a whole different person that that maturity that growth that's exactly the type of of ascension of, of improvement that you want to see not only on the stuff, but also in the mental aspect of the game. And I think Tyler glass now has definitely done the work on that side of the, the, the game. Yeah. I mean, in a nutshell, I think Tyler glass now returning late into the season in the postseason, he didn't look like he lost a beat when he was vintage glass now before the injury. So I think that's something. And I think also, the Rays have confidence in that too, by giving him that multi-year contract uh, for 2023 and 2024, which again, I know we're kind of skipping ahead here, but 
and that assume that that assures that I, I think he's going to be in a raised uniform uh, for the next couple of years at the very least for 2023. But that's also big for him of he doesn't have to worry at least for a little while of the money stuff. He's he's getting paid very very handsomely, so not having to think and worry about that or have that on the 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 back burner um is is very important he can just go out and perform and pitch and i think um that should theoretically uh lead to to better performance fewer distractions better performance um so that's what i got on on that front now uh any negatives to a highlight or pinpoint for tyler glass i really couldn't find anything i mean if this is really nitpicking but hey i wish he would have maybe came back a little bit earlier if possible, but you can't really control that after the type of injury that he had. So um, I guess it would have just been like, Hey, it'd be nice to maybe have, you know, 25 innings from you uh, during the 2022 regular season, but he, it, it is what it is. I mean, we nitpicked, or I, I, I think we nitpicked on, on McClanahan maybe, or nitpicked on Jeffrey Springs. There is no nitpicking at all to do with Tyler Glass. Yeah. No, there's, I mean, it, it, there wasn't just enough to see. I loved everything I saw, and I think every race fan loved what they saw. So there really isn't a negative. But I, talking, shifting towards the the future with the team, I'll say it right now. And you know, you know, you can clip this uh, for for when it maybe I'm wrong, but I I do believe I'm going to be proven right. Is that Tyler Glass now is going to be wearing a Rays uniform? for all of 2023 and all of 2024. They will pay that 25 mil to him and he will play all of that season with the race. You do not mess with windows of opportunity just because 2023 might not go great, which I don't think that it, I think it will. Sorry. I think 2023 will be great for the race because of the scheduling and guys coming back healthy. I think it's going to be great, especially if they know that they need to get some power. So 2023 should be good. 2024 should be good. I don't see a scenario where just because they are under, you know, playing in 2023 that, oh, well, let's just trade Tyler Glass now. Like that would, I I just do not see that happening whatsoever in the trade deadline mm-hmm. of 23, in the off season of 23 to 24, and at any point during the 2024 season. Tyler Glass now is going to be a race player for the next two years. Book it, clip it. That's how I feel. I think the key is... And not necessarily on whether he is going to be traded or not, but big picture thing. And maybe this speaks to a little bit of the negatives and the future of glass now combined is can he prove and exhibit and show that he'll throw more than 111, 112 innings in a regular season? We've yet to see that. Jeffrey Springs has thrown more innings in a single season than Tyler glass now has. That's that. That is something that's pretty weighty. So as good and as raw skills and refined skills that Tyler Glass now has, at the end of the day, he has to prove that he can post in 2023 and or 2024. And we've talked about this with in, in the Springs episode. Like we we need to see Springs get to the 150 because there's going to be another player that's going to be watched very carefully with his innings. And that guy is Tyler Glass now. If you guys got that, awesome. If you didn't, well, there it is. That's the answer. It's Tyler Glass now. He's going to be watched very heavily because there is a $25 million investment for him in 2024. So they want to take care of that. So, Kevin, I think the 111 uh, career uh, innings pitched might not be crossed next year or might be crossed by a few i don't i don't Mm. see a scenario where he goes and pitches as many innings as springs did this year which was 135 and a third i don't see that what i do see is like a 110 to 120 that i can believe that i can believe and it's going to be a lot of five inning outings and then book it five and dive we want you healthy for october that's fair that's fair uh all right um I don't know if this is really fair, but I guess uh, if we have to give a grade to Tyler Glass now for 2022, what are you giving him? I mean, this feels kind of silly to give a a grade for this small sample size, but 
I think in this one, maybe not a numerical um, um, grade is in order. Maybe just a letter grade. And, and in that case, I would just give them an A. Just a, okay. uh, just a, a solid A. Right? I mean, thank you for coming back. Thank you for signing that extension. Awesome for you to get that money. Be healthy next year. Go get them. Yeah. Be, be, the, be, be the number one. You know, that, that's what you got to do. Or do you do the old SU, satisfactory, unsatisfactory? Give them a satisfactory. Uh, that's go. very fair that's as well. Bad, and yeah. you know what? Bonus points or kudos to signing that uh, that deal uh, with the Rays, too, because he, I guess, didn't necessarily have to do that. Um, yeah. Takes two to tango. So uh, there it is with Tyler Glass now. That now, BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. Football, basketball, soccer, esports, all of it at betonline.net. So head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online. It is where the game starts. So now uh, this other player is uh, a different case, an interesting case. Uh, Luis Patino. Um, the good, the bad, the future, and the grade for Luis Patino. Uh, what do you have in the what went well column for him? Very little went well for Luis Patino this season. Yeah. Um, I will say the positives. He's twenty three. Let's let's just all before we get our pitchforks and our torches. He's twenty three. That is very very young that is very young there is still time to get something out of that tank um and 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 still meet the maybe not the expectations but be a serviceable guy and a way that i think could be positive for him to to reach that level would be kind of i want him to be a receiver of a makeover of a raise makeover and by that i mean can we give Luis Patino the Alex Colome treatment? Look, it didn't work as a starter, bud. Didn't yeah. work. I'm sorry. We gave it a shot. Didn't. But you know what? That fastball and that slider, if we get it to command enough for about 20 pitches every night, you could be a lethal guy in the eighth, ninth, seventh inning. You could be a part of that stable. Nobody thought... Everybody thought Alex Colomay was going to be the next big starter for the race. I watched him. I know you did. And I know a lot of race fans that are watching this and subscribing on YouTube because you guys are awesome and you're hitting that like button as well. We saw the experiment of Alex Colomay as a starter and it didn't work. But boy, yeah. did it work when he was turned into a bullpen arm. I think that could be a solution for Luis Patino in the future. I agree. And as far as the positives, I'm with you. The fact of the age, just 23 years old. And I guess maybe it necessarily didn't work out, but the fact that uh, he did expand his repertoire, not just fastball slider, but tinkering with a sinker and a changeup. I don't know if that's something that's going to continue, but it's at least something that he showed. But I'm with you. I think that um, who knows, maybe you give, because of his age, you give another crack at the starter thing, but something tells me that he has more value and more life as a bullpen arm, because I, I'm getting this strong sense of negatives here that if you keep him as a starter again, albeit he's very young still. Um, but I almost see a Chris Archer 2.0 of, okay, he'll give you five or six. He might give you nine strikeouts, but he's also going to give you five earned runs and hang a couple sliders, and the game's not going to go so well. In every outing of his, he let up runs. The only outing that he didn't let up runs was against the Royals, where he went five and two-thirds, four hits, and no runs. That was amazing. That was a great outing. But again, that inconsistency, that, that cannot happen when you are in the starting rotation like on the starting rotation you have to be pretty stable you have you have to know what you're getting from guys that's why i know people don't might, might not veer to the quality start of six innings and three on runs because oh it's a 450 array i get that but like six if you give your team six innings if you allow three runs or less your team is in the ball game 
they are yeah. in for the they're in for the win. Luis Patino is very rarely giving opportunities for his club to win. Um, and and it sucks for him that his last outing was that shellacked outing in, in Yankee Stadium where I mean they hit him under his tongue. I mean, it was just mm-hmm. they hit him everywhere, man. It was it was it was base it should have been rated R because it was just a lot of graphic nests happened during that outing it was a lot it was a lot to watch to be quite frank. yeah um so yeah that's that's very that's very true and again also going towards the not so good with Luis Patino um the oblique strain that certainly didn't help matters either so um it, it's so funny where again this is where we have to temper our expectations for what a prospect can and will become because we look back a couple of years ago at that Padres trade, uh, sending Blake Snell to them and acquiring Patino and others. And Patino was the crown jewel of that deal. And he was, he's basically been an afterthought. He was certainly an afterthought this season. Kevin, is, is it time to talk about the Blake Snell deal and how it might have not been a win for the Rays, or is it still okay? Look, like Hunt is still yeah. a minor leaguer. Cole Wilcox could still turn into something. Francisco Mejia has been serviceable. Blake Snell hasn't been a Cy Young Award winner on the other side. I know that, but get adding all of the all of those things up, and if we had to say a win mm-hmm. or a loss for this Blake Snell trade. Uh, probably lean, lean towards a loss. I, I, I think it would lean toward a loss. And I think that the Rays need one more player of that deal to pan out besides Mejia. Yeah. Right now is a loss. I, I would agree with you. And I, and you know, maybe if you don't agree with us, you know, tell us in the YouTube comments why you don't agree that the Blake Snell deal is a loss as of right now. That is November, 2022. Um, it's, it's a loss. Uh, but it, it could still turn out to be a win. That's where we are right yeah. now. It's a loss right now. It could turn out to be a win, but we'll see what happens with Mejia. We'll see what happens. If Patino, for example, does become an Alex Colome 2.0, boy, that worked out. That worked out real nice. If yeah. Blake Hunt uh, becomes the backup catcher for, for the race in, in, when there are injuries or something for, like that in, in 2023, if Cole Wilcox you know, you know, doesn't get injured again and, and can rise above – uh, the low levels of minor of the minor league system and actually give something to the Rays major league club, then all right, we can talk. But right now, I I I don't I don't see how you would look at this trade and say that it's a it, it, it's been a win for for the Rays. Right, and honestly, um, the Wilcox situation he's not even on my purview. Blake Hunt, um, friend of the program. I'm not sure what his major league potential is. So I think the best bet is turning Patino into a lever, uh, a reliever, making sure that he's effective as a reliever. I think that's the best bet to make to salvage this Blake Snell Padres trade. So I mean, um, could you say that uh, uh, you know trading Blake Snell perhaps freed up money to get Nelson Cruz? To get a David Peralta? Yeah. I mean, we could all we could work it out the way we want to. I mean, the fact is, I mean, as it stands right now, I guess the the Rays are 0 for 2 when in trading with the Padres in terms of the outcomes of those. So um Patino, uh, I believe he's still pre-arb. Um assume he's gonna be part of this team in 2023 to some extent. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I th- I think they, they might give him, like you said, that that last hurrah at, at starting but if it doesn't go well i i think you might be seeing that that makeover i yeah. i would start that makeover in the off season hey look we are going to start working off this i was starting off right that in, in november mm-hmm. let's let's turn you into reliever so he knows what to expect in spring training i think that's a little bit more time for him to kind of get his his mind right and and know what to expect that is huge in life to know what to expect that is a tremendous benefit. We don't often get that as ball players. If you're able to give that to him, give it to right. him. Uh, that's that's where I'm standing. Convert yeah, and, and I think that um, the the Rays have 
it's more feasible and allowable to turn him into a reliever because Jurass Mustin and Jeffrey Springs have elevated themselves to starters post. Whereas if, if those guys were relievers to this point, then uh, there'd be a lot of pressure on Luis Patino or somebody else to figure out that starter role or Josh yeah. Fleming or something like that. So um, there's that. Uh, I also agree. Yeah. He'll be part of this uh, franchise uh, going forward. His grade though. Um, I don't think it's going to be very good from either of us. It's great for 2022. No, I'm, I'm going to, I think this is me not being nice and giving him a kind of a extra credit here just because of the young thing. And, you know, El Electrico, that's a dope ass, uh, you know, nickname. Yeah. I'm going to give him a C minus. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit lower. I'm going to give him a D plus 68. That's what I got for him. So, okay. That's fair. It is what it is. It's not good. Not good. It's not good. I mean, I you can't put, you know, you know, I can't you know, put lipstick on a pig. That's the one. I didn't want to say it. But can't, thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, what, it's, there's something yeah. about a turd as well. It wasn't a good performance. <laughs> uh, all right. W what is good? What is um, good is baseball trivia name that war. So without further ado, Ulysses, what do you have for baseball trivia? Uh, we will continue this discussion, but uh, Ulysses, we have to tell the audience about something called Simply Safe. Well, Simply Safe uh, was named the best home security system of 2022, Kevin, by U.S. News and World Report for a third year in a row. And that is because your fa family, your home comes first when you're using Simply Safe. You actually can have 24 7 monitoring agents or Simply Safe tech support staff to help you whenever you need. Um, they're always there in an emergency. You can uh, do uh, Simply Safe and include it into your house by uh, in going to simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. I'll say it again simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. You get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. That's 50% off. You're not going to find that anywhere else so again use simplysafe.com slash locked on mlb there's no save like simply save is what we say uh, so for trivia today we have some observational trivia that i kind of devised here uh, i like this sort of stuff i don't know if you like it but here goes nothing if you look at al east stadiums the home and away dugouts I want you to tell me, after I tell you the stadium, if the home dugout is going to be in the first base side or the third base side, okay? So okay. I'm going to start with the ALE stadiums. First one on the list, Tropic and a Field. Where is the home dugout? The home dugout is on the first base side. That is correct. Very good. Okay. Fastball down the middle. Boom. Home run. Very good. Number two, Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium, third base side. Strike one. Yankee Stadium, the home dugout, is on the first base side. Okay. Number three, Fenway Park. Fenway Park, that is on the third base side. Incorrect. The home <laughs> dugout is on the first base side at Fenway Park. Number four. Camden Yards, where is the home dugout? I'm just like Christmas train this Scantron here. True, false, true, false, true, false. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, I don't know if this is a trick question, if they're, if they're all on the first base side, but now I feel like I'm going to be wrong on this one if I say first base side. So I'll say third base side for Camden Yards incorrect it's on the first base side number five on the list roger center where is that okay that's on the first base side i'm going to say that every stadium's home team is on the i don't know i don't, I don't know what i'm doing here i say they're they're all on the first base side i guess i don't know 
Incorrect. The only one in the AL East that's on the third base side for the home dugout is, of course, the Toronto Blue Jays at Rogers mm. Center. So, yes, it was kind of a tricky question. Four out of the five stadiums in AL East have their home dugouts on the first base side. And I want to tell you just um, what do you think is better to have? Uh, you know, first base, I always think it's a little bit m- better because you know how many times you're going to ground out you're going to you know run to first just because you have to and then your dugout is right there why not have that be the short walk of shame uh you know after a ground out or whatever on on your home field like that should be the thing you know to have to cross all over the field to go to your dugout and the third base side just always seemed kind of odd to me I agree with that. And also you get a base hit or you draw a walk, you get some cheers from your fellow players, fellow teammates and coaching staff of, Hey, good job. You know, gives a little extra motivation and pep in your step too. So I guess uh, Canada does things backwards, different than the U S of a, (laughs) so there we go. That's something new. We learn every day. Um, all right. My trivia question. Um, we, uh, we know about G-Man Choi and his Korean roots, so I figured let's do a name that war of a well-known Korean ball player. This one, a pitcher, and this one, his name is Chan Ho Park. What is Chan Ho Park's career war? Oh, that's a tricky one, man. In Hope Park. I'm going to need a little bit of help before I do this. Can you tell me the year that he debuted? 94. 94. He debuted in 94. Okay. And I'm pretty sure he was still alive in MLB in 2004. And is that correct? Was Did he play in 2004? Yes. Okay. So we got at least a 10 year career here. Hmm. How good was Chan Ho Park? I'm going to say five years. He was a three war player. That's 15. And then another five years of just being a one war player. So that's 20. But I feel like a 20 war guy would get more respect than Chan Ho Park does. This is a this is a nasty this is a this is Jeffrey Springs change up. This is a mm-hmm. nasty curveball from Tyler Glass now. What do you guys say? Uh, locked on race listeners and watchers on YouTube, comment on what you think it is right now. Don't cheat. Don't don't do it after Kevin says the answer though. Mm, I'm gonna go with 19. Chan Ho Park played 17 years in the bigs. He has the most wins of any Asian born pitcher with 124 and supplanting Hideo Nomo for that distinction. Uh, 1,715 strikeouts. What's that? More than Nomo? Wow. Uh, yeah, according to Wikipedia, more wins That's than crazy. Nomo. Uh, I guess when you play 17 years in the bigs for uh-huh. the Dodgers, the Rangers, the Padres, the Mets, the Dodgers again, the Phillies, the Yankees, the Pirates, uh, you rack up some W's. Um, okay. I don't know if I mentioned this, but he was a one-time All-Star in 2011. Uh, I say all that to say this. You are essentially right on the money with his career war, uh, B-Ref war. 19.9 B-Ref. Oh. Congratulations. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the Academy uh, for bestowing this honor upon me. This really means a lot to me. This, this, this name that war yeah. is the best game ever uh brought about so that's that's yeah. fantastic i, I th- that's great I, i'm, I'm yes. very happy you scared me you scared me because you're going on these all accolades and i'm like okay definitely undersold 
uh, park here, but right on the money. I love that. It had been a minute. Yeah. Hadn't it been locked on race listener? It had been a minute since I did do my, my, my dark magic uh, for name that war. So I'm glad that it's back. Yes, congratulations. And his uh, F war is twenty point eight, and I should add uh, between nineteen ninety four to two thousand twelve. Well, he played in the KBO in two thousand twelve. Between nineteen ninety four and two thousand ten, uh, he accumulated uh, nearly two thousand innings pitched in the big leagues, and he's actually, uh, I think, a professional golfer playing on the Korean tour. So multifaceted oh. in that respect. Uh, Chano Park threw very hard, had a lot of different pitches. Not surprised that he lasted as long as he did in the big leagues. Um, so very good. Congratulations on that name, that war. And uh, we'll have to see if anybody on YouTube uh, guessed close before we revealed uh, the actual total and that they didn't cheat either. That's also a big component of it as well. So in the meantime, thank you for making the Lockdown Race podcast your very first listen every day. Now make your second uh, second listen, the Lockdown Sports Today podcast that is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you next week. 